A house in Fairview goes up in flames and fire crews work to put out the blaze. Millions of Americans have already cast their ballots as both candidates were in battleground states today. As the pandemic continues, the United States sets a new unfortunate COVID-19 record. Live in high definition from your news leader, this is Jet 24 Action News at 11. Fire crews in Fairview responding to a garage fire this evening. It's new at 11. Calls for that fire went out at 9 o'clock tonight. When crews arrived in the 4400 block of Miller Avenue uh, in Fairview, they found flames coming through the roof of the attached garage. Smoke quickly filling the house as well. The damage appears to be extensive. It's not clear at this time if anyone was home at the time. Fire crews were called out to a late night upper floor fire at an apartment complex. Erie fire crews were called to the Schmid Towers in the 100 block of East 6th Street around 2.30 a.m. Sunday. According to Erie County 911, a couch in one of the apartments caught fire. Crews were able to contain the fire quickly before it spread. No injuries were reported and the cause is still under investigation. There are just 10 days to election day. Romina Puga tells us at least 56 million people have already voted as both candidates hit battleground states. Jet 24 Action News is your local election headquarters. Early voting has begun in all 50 states plus D.C. And this morning, President Trump joining those 56 million early voters by casting his vote in West Palm Beach. Uh, I voted for a guy named Trump. Before heading to North Carolina, Ohio and Wisconsin. Ten days we're going to win the state of North Carolina. And we're going to win four more years in the White House. Meantime, Joe Biden campaigning in Pennsylvania, encouraging people to make a plan to vote. I'm running as a proud Democrat. But I will govern as an American president for everybody. That's the job of a president. The duty to care for everyone. The duty to heal. And you too have a sacred duty. And that's to vote. The early voting data continues to hit record numbers across the nation, with six states already surpassing one million votes cast in person. And today, in-person early voting began in New York, where long lines were seen at the Barclays Center and Madison Square Garden. But in Georgia, those long lines once again prompting allegations of voter suppression. Biden's running mate, Kamala Harris, urged voters in the state to cast their ballots early. And we have to at some point sit back and think, why are they trying to make it so difficult and confusing for us to vote? And I think the answer is because they know our power. With just 10 days to Election Day, the candidates will continue crisscrossing America, hitting those battleground states. Romina Puga, ABC News, Los Angeles. And for all the latest election news, you can find it at our Your Election Headquarters at YourErie.com. Yesterday, the U.S. set a new record, a daily high of more than 83,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases. ABC's Alex Perche says 80% of ICU beds are filled in 24% of the country's hospitals. According to an internal Health and Human Services memo obtained by ABC News, coronavirus cases and deaths are rising by double digits. 39 states are reporting rising hospitalizations, with 14 hitting record highs. This week, Missouri reported its third straight day of a record number of COVID hospitalizations and highest seven-day average in over five months. Medical officials are warning that a fall surge is blanketing much of the United States. Illinois' top doctor breaking down while announcing the state's caseload. A total of 364 33 confirmed cases since the start of this pandemic. Excuse me, please. Ohio set record highs three days in a row. This Cincinnati doctor trying to put her community's 25 weekly deaths in perspective. Imagine if a bus, we had a fatal bus crash every week. Would we act? Yes, we would act. The University of Dayton announced one of their students died from COVID-19 on Thursday, just 18 years old. 
New Jersey's governor says today's COVID-19 case count marks its highest daily figure since May. Some doctors stating that pandemic fatigue has led to decreased mask wearing and social distancing and subsequent growth in new cases. Dr. Anthony Fauci on MSNBC saying President Trump hasn't attended a coronavirus task force briefing in months and is choosing to listen to science advisor Scott Atlas, who recently tweeted that masks don't work. I definitely don't have his ear as much as Scott Atlas right now. Uh, that has been a changing situation. And in the race for a vaccine, AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson both announced their late stage trials have resumed in the U.S. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Here are the latest COVID-19 numbers for the state and surrounding regions. The State Department of Health reporting 19 new cases in Erie County. That brings the total to nearly 2,000 cases. Statewide, 2,043 new cases are reported, bringing the total statewide to over 192,000. There were also 29 new deaths reported. That total stands at 8,654. Crawford County is reporting 449 cases, and that's an increase of 11. Warren County holding steady at 62. Chautauqua County reporting 936, and Ashtabula County is up five cases to 740. Nearly 70 years ago, Erie native Harold Knight was killed in the Korean War, but his family never got a chance to say goodbye with a proper burial. Chelsea Swift was at today's emotional public service as Knight was finally laid to rest with military honors. Harold Knight grew up in Erie, attending Erie High School, but at age 20, he was killed in action during the Korean War. Almost 70 years later, his brother Albert Knight says his family can honor Harold with a funeral. So I'm, I'm very proud of it. Uh, and we're paying a big tribute to it for him, you know, and we're sure glad he's home. Albert Knight adding he remembers the last time he saw his brother when he came home from Korea to visit. He told my dad, you'll probably never see me again. And he went back to Korea and he never did see him again. Harold Knight and other U.S. soldiers' remains were returned from Korea to the U.S. Department of Defense back in 2018. His sisters Patricia Mickenchak and Francis Thomas say this has been an overwhelming process, but they are glad to have their brother buried at home. It means a lot, a very lot. And we're, we appreciate everybody, not only just family, anybody that's here to help us through this. It's wonderful. I can't express how I feel. It's beautiful. And members of the Knight family say they are grateful to gather together and celebrate the life of Harold Knight and his service in the U.S. Army. We always kind of looked at ourselves as kind of a humble, small family, and to come back here and then just see the recognition and um, what this family's done. Um, Harold, you know, being in the Korean War. Chelsea Swift, Jet 24 Action News. Harold Knight's casket was escorted by state police and Patriot riders from downtown Erie to Hector Thorne Cemetery in Seneca, Pennsylvania. Coming up on Jet 24 Action News at 11, one business is showing its support for a local high school football player who is still in the hospital. That's after Craig's forecast. Hey, Craig. Hi there, Brian. Watching uh, temperatures drop uh, to some pretty chilly levels overnight. We'll give you the details in the forecast next. From your news leader. You're watching Brian Wilk.